All right, so in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about Newton graphs and iteration, and in particular, its application for our constitutive equation, epsilon the total strain equal to sigma over e plus sigma over k to the 1 over n power. This is the ramberg osgood equation that we have just talked about. And I like to abbreviate that as the RO equation. So let's talk about the newton raphson iteration technique in general, and uh, we'll kind of get a feel for where it comes from. But if you have a, a function, you know, you usually have like y is equal to some function of x, what you can do is you can rearrange this so that you have like a f of x minus y equal to zero. And by doing this, when, you're, when you have a solution for x that is a solution for your equation, then you're, then you're at zero. So if we're on a plot, I'm trying to make a straight line here, and here's our f of x minus y value here, and this is um, our x value. If we have some function and we guess a number for x, that number of x could give us a value of this f of x minus y to be either greater than 0, less than 0, or right at 0. If we pick the value that's right at 0, we have the exact value of x that satisfies this equation, and that x would be the root. So going back to our ramberg oskar equation, if I find the right value of sigma that makes this right-hand side equal to the left-hand side, then I've got the right value of sigma. I have the root for the ramberg oskar equation for stress. So some numbers could be positive, some numbers could be negative, and whatever this function looks like, you know, I'm just going to draw it like that. And if we get this point right here, this is our root. This is the solution of x that works. Now we could just guess a number, but that's not uh, terribly convenient. But we are going to make a guess, but we're going to kind of do an informed guess for any subsequent guess that we make. Suppose we start off with this as our guess. And uh, let's see what I have in my notes. I said that maybe this is guess x1. Now we know we're not at our root, but what we can do is we can calculate a slope of the line at this position. So maybe at the slope of the line is something like this at that particular spot. The way that we calculate the slope of that line is we take the derivative of a function with respect to x and evaluate it at that point. Oops, get a little ahead of myself here. I don't want to give anything away. Take the derivative of that function with respect to x, and we get the slope. And an interpretation of the slope is the tangent. Now, if we want a new guess, and let me use a different color. How about this black? If I want a new guess that's right here, I can estimate what that new guess needs to be. It's x2 that x2 is going to be my old guess, which is from here all the way out to x1. Take away this distance right here, which I can find through the use of my tangent. So let's call this distance d right here. And here's my height. Okay, the height is equal to the function evaluated at f of x1. And if I take the tangent of theta, if I look at that, tangent of theta is equal to that h over d distance. If I rearrange this and solve for the distance d, that is equal to h over the tangent of theta. 
and my new guess x2 is going to be my old guess x1 minus that distance d is going to be minus h over tangent theta. Now the value of h is f a function evaluated at x1 over the tangent theta which is the derivative evaluated at point x1. And by doing this, as I get to this spot, now I'm even closer. And by iterating this, I keep updating my new guess to be my old guess minus the functional value over the derivative, then I can draw myself in closer to this root. Um, this is not a class in numerical methods, but if you were to take a class in numerical methods and study this technique, this is known as a superconvergent technique. Now, to apply this to our equation, uh, let's uh, get a little bit of room and we'll do that. We need to write this in our functional form. As f of sigma is going to be sigma over e plus sigma over k to the 1 over n minus whatever value of epsilon that we are looking at to find our stress, we're also going to need the derivative of f with respect to sigma. And we're using sigma now instead of x. So I have 1 over e. Okay, I have the derivative of the insides. That's 1 over k. I've got uh, the exponent. So that's 1 over n. I have sigma over k on the inside. And then I have 1 over n that quantity minus 1, and that's my new exponent right there. And of course the derivative of that epsilon term, that's a constant, that's equal to 0. So to program this, what I would do is I would first make a guess for epsilon, let's call that epsilon 1, and then evaluate f of sigma Oh, excuse me, I, I'd guess for sigma 1, sorry. We're given the strain value. I would evaluate f of sigma 1 and the derivative with respect to sigma 1. Well, I should use a little bit better notation there. And then I would make a new guess, which would be, say, sigma 2, which would be my old guess, minus f of sigma 1 over df of sigma 1. Now, as I draw closer to the actual root, this top part goes away, goes to 0. And so this should converge to be very nearly the same values. Now, in numerical methods, convergence criteria is something that needs to be set. So let's do like if the absolute value of sigma 2 minus sigma 1 is less than, you know, if we're doing KSI, maybe we should do 0.1 KSI. Then converged in print answer. else we're going to go back and we're going to say our sigma 1 was our old sigma 2 value and then we're going to go and we're going to loop back up into here and continue on until we reach convergence. All right. Now what I'd like uh, for my students to do is to set up a Fortran program in order to evaluate, uh, in order to program Ramberg-Osgood iteration. 
Now I know you're thinking Fortran, that's a dead language. It, uh, it is still useful. There are lots of legacy programs that are written in Fortran, final element codes, and numerical codes, and so forth. There are times when uh, you know you just don't have access to a root solver or MATLAB or maybe cost too much money. Fortran you can find for free. I have a link on my web page. And it's, it's useful. and It's also a very good exercise in logic. Um, so I'd like for you to go ahead and do that. And this will be practice for when we go to write our user material model for Abacus, because that also takes Fortran as input. All right, so that's mainly what I want to talk about with that. I don't think I'm going to go through and do the Fortran right now today. Uh, but if I have time, I'll come back and I'll make a separate video where I go through the, the Fortran program and, and show how it works.